Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game that was played at the 1946 Kazan Championship. On the white end, Rashid Nyashmatinov, and he's playing against Pete Ermelin. On board, we have an open Sicilian. Dragon. What variation does white go with to defeat the dragon so fast? F4. The Levin fish. With F4, white is shooting for a quick E5 to bother the knight. The reply to f4 is bishop to g7. I think many players would go with this move, playing the Sicilian dragon. Normally, you follow g6 with bishop to g7, no problems. This is not considered best, though, in this position. What is considered best? Knight c6. Now, I'd like to touch on a few variations with this sixth move by black, knight c6. As mentioned, it's a brief game. By move 8, though, this game is already over. It's decisive for white by move 8. Knight c6 prevents e5, at least for the moment. If white tries e5 here, black can take, and there's no time to recapture, because there's a problem. There would be a problem on d4. What is considered, in the computer's eyes, best is to continue to develop. Bishop e3, strengthening white's control over d4. In practice, though, knight takes knight is played with then e5. And from here, after knight d7, play can continue with pawn takes on d6, or queen to f3 with an eye on the c6 pawn. It is still very much a ball game ahead. One thing I questioned in this position was what if black goes ahead and says, you know what, I'm okay being uncastled because I want to go after this pawn on e5 with the knight and bishop. So for instance, knight d7 or knight g4 followed up with the fianchetto. Would white have to give that pawn up? No. For instance, if the knight goes to d7, first of all, as white, you could certainly consider a pawn sacrifice e6 to destroy black's structure further or you could defend the pawn how i will show with knight g4 bishop f4 bishop g7 and now white would be able to flick in this cool move queenside castles with check the best move here is bishop to d7 going into a pin and then you're ready to play rook e1 to watch over the pawn you don't have to give that pawn up and next you can look to kick this knight away, maybe even sideline the knight on h6. There's a way that black can also go wrong in this position. And I think many players might play this very move. White would now be winning. What's the winning move here for white? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, winning move is knight b5. Threatening not only to win the rook, but to give checkmate. So, for instance, if you move the rook, knight check, and that's mate. How else are you going to defend? If you move the king, it's mate straight away. The only other option, to take the knight. And now this is going to feel like checkers, in a way. Some triple jump coming up with bishop takes pawn check, king here. We know what happens. Bishop would have to block. There goes the bishop with check. And there goes the knight. That's our triple jump. In the end, white is up a piece. In any case, no knight c6 in this game. Instead, the fianchetto. e5 hits. d takes e5. f takes e5. What do you do here? In the game, the knight goes to d5, and it's over. There's only one move black can play to stay in the game, and that is knight d7. e6 is considered best, knight e5. This line here, it is still a ball game ahead. I'm not really a big fan. I wouldn't really be a big fan of playing the black side here with this isolated pawn, but anyhow, that's just me. 
Where does black go wrong? Right here. He puts the knight on d5 in this game. Basically, any forward knight moves, except for knight to e4, we just take the knight. Any of these moves to d5, g4, or h5 can be met in the same way. And that is with the following move, move played in the game. Bishop b5, check. What does black do now? You can't go to c6. White has two pieces on that. You also can't block on d7 with the knight or bishop because the knight would hang. The move played in the game? Black goes uncastled. White castles. And from here, bishop takes pawn is played. What other options are there for black? Don't be concerned in a position like this playing as white. Oh, am I going to end up with doubled c pawns if knight takes knight? No. You're going to give checkmate in three moves with knight e6. And what do you do? Queen takes queen is hitting next. This is the longest black can last going here. There goes the queen and there goes the king. Any other tries here besides the move in the game? Bishop takes e5, not really. How do you develop these guys? On a6, white would be glad to put the bishop on an even better diagonal where it coordinates on f7 with the rook. Anything else? I don't even know what else to look at. If e6, you can play queen f3, looking for mate on f7. All right. In this game, bishop takes pawn. Now bishop h6 is played. Options here for black. King g8, the move played in the game. Or bishop to g7. This is a simple line because we have fun by just taking stuff. Bishop takes bishop check. Knight takes knight would follow, and after queen takes knight, we win the queen with knight f5. Best here for black is to take here and play a position where it's the rook and knight versus the queen, but they are no match for the queen. White is winning. In this game, king g8. Now comes knight takes knight. And the reply here is queen takes knight. One variation I had a look at was suppose black does not take the knight straight away and instead tries to be fancy with e6, saying, if you move your knight, I'm going to take the piece back and say check. Well, if e6 is played, white has this move, knight f3, counterattacking the bishop, and white will remain up the piece. So in this game, queen takes knight is the follow-up, and now in comes knight f5. This king doesn't have any squares. We don't need the strength of a queen to deliver mate. We just need to put a knight on e7, and it's game over. And that's what's being threatened here. Two things are being threatened. The queen and this mate in one on e7 with the knight. How do you defend both? In the game queen c5, it is check, but now comes bishop e3. Have a look at this position right here. Can you spot all the threats white has? There are three threats here. One is on the queen. Two is with a mate in one. And there is a third here with knight h6, which is leading to a mate in two. You can't defend all three. <laughs> so black defends bishop takes queen and the mate in one threat with queen c7. But now there is this mate in two. Knight h6 check. This game goes no further. Black resigns. Black's options, king f8, king g7, it doesn't matter. Rook takes f7 next, will be mate. Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.